been up to loads of interesting things to be fair um i ended up going to uh print works the other day which was pretty decent the first time i've ever been to that nightclub here in the uk and it's probably one of our better establishments um there was a bit of bad news earlier on this year when they announced that they were going to knock it down and you know it wasn't really i don't think they stressed the importance of it or they didn't really emphasize that i felt like i felt like they kind of just you know let people just interpret what they wanted to interpret but allegedly according to them it was always meant to be a temporary space it was always meant to be a space where they kind of took over in between the whoever bought the site deciding what they could do or getting permission to build on that land it was always meant to be like a temporary sort of situation which i had no idea about they announced it's temporary or, or anyway they're gonna have to kind of leave there now because that you know the, the the builders are ready to or what you call it the construction's ready to happen in terms of chain turning it into another co-working space another block of offices another group of random stores you know just nonsense stuff right but anything cultural that's actually contributing to that local community get rid of it let's stick another shop there let's stick another building made out of glass and metal so pretty boring and then they announced a slew of shows to kind of close it off and if i'm not mistaken the show that we went to which was trans madonna which is dixon's sort of like um immersive club experience where he kind of you know integrates loads of cool v uh, they're called vjs right loads of cool video stuff loads of cool um ai stuff loads of cool ar stuff um, loads of cool virtual reality stuff and he kind of integrates it into this whole big immersive type of experience and because printworks is pretty immersive in its own right because you have to kind of walk a bit of a distance to get to it then there's this whole kind of you know journey you have to go through to get searched and to put your car in the locker go up the stairs blah blah blah. it's a little bit of a labyrinth in itself yeah no pun intended so um it kind of adds to the whole you know immersive experience thing so it made sense why he wanted to do it at that place and um it was pretty decent for what it is don't get me wrong and i'll definitely do a full review of it later but it was a little bit you know um a little bit a little bit it flattered to deceive a tiny bit but it was decent i'm not going to lie just to be able to go into space and see what it's like because i'm a big you know it's kind of a, a mute point to make but there's something about me that kind of just wants to always see things for myself i want to just have a view of it take it in even if i don't like it cool but i want to just put my own eyes on it because people love to kind of put you off on things because i feel like sometimes when people say oh this place is shit that place is good or no this place is shit usually i feel like they do it in a way to kind of like humble brag that they've been there and you haven't and to also hope that their word has some sort of influence in your decision making process like their recommendation is that crucial or is that important that it's going to sway you to not go it's going to be the final thing oh you know what i was planning my whole summer holidays around going to this place but now i've just had this one random conversation with you after we've had a couple of bumps in the toilet that i'm now not going to go nah it's never like that so i never really enjoy that sort of thing when people say that kind of thing i always kind of if anything it kind of it kind of um cemented my resolve to go even for even more so but um yeah what can you do so i end up going to that that was pretty decent um what else i ended up doing that's bad for the most part working going to gym as per usual um of course sober october still on so i so gonna see cracking on with that so it's been a pretty nice one to be fair but i'll definitely crack on with more of it later on as i kind of proceed and let you know what my deal was in the event but apart from that one other thing i wanted to quickly mention i thought was interesting in terms of cut up you know catching up on top of the club stuff Obviously, with Sober October, I'm kind of, you know, abstaining from the drugs and the alcohol. And with myself being an avid fan of clubs and of dance music and me being a DJ myself, you would imagine or, you know, it's safe to it's safe to assume that drugs and alcohol are, are kind of intrinsically linked to my clubbing experience and the things I do and how I enjoy them. And for me, it's not it's not been so difficult to quit it because I've done it quite often because I, you know, used to DJ quite regularly. Now it's kind of, you know, it's been a bit of a stop start thing since the pandemic for various reasons. But before when I was DJing quite often and I was kind of going out quite often, I kind of um, decided of my own volition to be like, OK, cool, I need to like pencil in a couple of months in the year where I just abstain from everything. And usually it'd be the, the typical bait one. So it'd be dry January and it'd be like a October, sober October type of thing. And I kind of have those in between and then of course in between those months the thing I was always really fortunate about I think maybe because you know I was brought up in a household where there was really a lot of alcohol in the household there wasn't any actually and then I guess because I was in the church for so long when I did finally move out and get my own place I didn't really have the habit of like drinking a lot anyway so when I did it would only be when I go out which obviously has to do it to an excessive amount because I'm British and uh, we don't have a middle gro middle gear but I think that kind of helped me in terms of not really like you know how some people really like booze 
I do, don't get me wrong, but it's more so as an accompaniment to go out. It's not like I like the taste of it. Like I like, I don't know, pineapples and shit. Do you know what I mean? It's not like that. Because if it was like that, I'd be, in a, I'd be in a much worse place, I think. So to quit it and to abstain from it isn't so difficult. The only difficult part of it is obviously the activities that are linked to it. So stuff like clubbing. So you go out clubbing and stuff, you're used to having a drink in your hand. You're used to having, you know, whatever, recreational drugs in your pocket to go and give yourself a boost later on in the night. So it's quite difficult to get your head around that. But because I had that training and that kind of prep before where I was DJing so often, I was going so often, I had to introduce those little safeguards to make it not crazy. So I'd kind of, you know, put those safeguards in place. Be like, okay, cool. If I go out this time, I'm not going to drink this. Or I'm not going to do that. I did these little things like this. So it kind of had let me balance. So when I come to doing a full 30 day or 31 day or whatever it may be cleanse, I can do it pretty easily. But one thing that I have to kind of stress, stress here, this is very, very important is that people don't say it's often enough, but like, let's be real. Going to a rave and raving in general, sober is boring. It's probably one of the most boring things you could ever do. Even if you're a fan of the music like I am, even if you're a fan of the DJs like, like I am, even if you're a fan of the scene and the culture like I am, even if you're a fan of the club space and just seeing clubs and how they operate and how they function like I am, it's still bloody boring to be in a space full of drunken high people with really loud music, bright lights, smoke everywhere, and you're not under any sort of level of drunkenness or highness. It really is difficult. But one thing it does do, I think, is that it should reaffirm your love for the music because there's no reason why you'd be there apart from listening to somebody play records right which is a pleasure in itself especially if it's these high level people like i saw like a dixon play right people who have been playing on the highest level for like you know two decades plus um you know flipping 100 shows per year like you can imagine you know he's way exceeded his ten thousand hours so his ability to just take you on this journey on an eight hour set six hour set four hour set it's unparalleled right? you're probably never going to see that level of fucking performance in your life do you know what I mean especially for the stuff that you actually enjoy because you know you're going home you listen to the mixes you're watching clips of him on arm to dixon you're seeing clips on his own instagram page so you're familiar with what he plays anyway and then he's playing the stuff you listen to in your crappy headphones on big massive speakers you know with all these cool people around with all these cool you know visuals and whatnot it's definitely going to do something too so if you can do that and be somewhat sober it's definitely a better thing to do but as an overall club experience is it is it something that i would maybe encourage probably not you probably you could probably best serve using your time doing other things that can maybe get you in, you know involved as well at maybe a higher level like maybe producing music or just learning how to dj properly i don't know whatever it may be or just doing other things in your life in general i don't think spending time in club sober legitimately it's probably the best use of anyone's time i don't think so personally because you notice everything i mean you notice people stepping on you you notice people barging you you notice how wet the floor is how sticky it is how wet just everything is in general you go to lean on the bar to order a drink your whole sleeve is wet um you go to go to the toilet you step in something is that piss is that is that somebody's phlegm is that nose juice or is that just water you have no idea <laughs> you know what i mean so that kind of thing can kind of not help but it probably is good for the interactions. That's the one thing I'd say. I think every interaction that I had there, um, especially for the ones that I can remember, were definitely good. Um, it didn't feel like I was, you know, holding onto somebody's arm and just shouting at them about some football thing or about something I saw on the internet or trying to explain a meme in real life. Like, no, it was just me having a kind of a passing conversation with people. And I did have a few of those. I bumped into a few old school friends and stuff. So that was quite nice to see those kind of people. Um, in a somewhat together state instead of seeing them flipping half drunk with one high hanging out in your pockets all smashed up in your face you know leaking or sweat like you're super high in that that's nice to see that so that was good um, but apart from that you know it probably isn't the best use of anyone's time but the one thing I do say that I think is really important if you are going to go out and you're going to rave a lot I think one big change that a lot of people can make I think many people especially in the UK because we have a real difficult relationship with alcohol right I feel like going out and not drinking alcohol is maybe the biggest game changer that's ever going to be introduced to your clubbing um, experience. Um, I think doing drugs is one thing because like I think, you know, in general, especially if you go out the places I go out, unless you're doing speed or something, which is, you know, re relatively cheap, for the most part, everything that you're going to be taking, you've paid some amount of money for. It's not going to, it's not going to be cheap. It's going to be 50 pounds plus, 30 pounds plus, whatever it may be. So you're only going to have a... Um, you know uh, a finite amount of money or time or resources or places to go to get that stuff right so once you've done you're basically done until you get to an afters or something so and also you know the effects aren't that you know 
the effects kind of reach hit, hit a wall. You can be chasing a dragon for a while, but usually they hit a wall. But I feel like with drinking, for whatever reason, you just crave more. And you can just keep going until you basically sleep. So if you can cut that out of your, if you can cut that out of what you do when you go out, it will help immensely with your pocket. And number two, the next day the hangovers aren't that bad. Even if you're on drugs, even if you just do drugs and you just drink Coca Cola and water and stuff, or maybe just water I mean, forget the Coca Cola, you'd be perfectly fine in the next day and it's a real big and again it takes a lot of effort to do because if you're used to like i am to pre-gaming and you know getting a couple of drinks in before getting a flipping magnum on the way there then maybe you go off the station you see another shop get another i mean you're used to that what's what i'm kind of used to like every place that you kind of get off of a public transport thing or everywhere you walk and you see a shop you basically grab another drink it's basically like you're on like a weird you know ton off license flipping beer run or pub off license beer crawl or something like that right so i feel like the level above that is to just go out and not do anything right not do any uh, in terms of drinking and just do the drugs if you if need be but i just don't see a future for myself where i'm going out completely sober and not drinking and not doing any drugs if i'm not playing i think if i'm playing it'd be different if i'm djing and i'm the one at the at the place performing it's totally different because that's when you're in like kind of artist mode performance mode and really and truly i feel like you know to perform at your highest anyway you should have no liquor no drugs in your system at whatsoever zero the only way to connect with your audience to really kind of especially when it comes to djing because it's sort of like a call and response type of occupation it's not really but it kind of is because you're kind of playing to the crowd um to kind of you trying to take them on a journey but you also wanting to feel their vibe and you know make sure that everything that you're playing kind of fits what's kind of going on in the room or even if you do the opposite you still have to know what they're feeling right um if you're gonna throw a little wrench in there you still have to know what they're feeling to kind of take it the other side and maybe clear the dance floor but the only way you can do that is if your receptors, your kind of um, emotion um, and vibe, you know, receptors are sort of like tingling and working. But once you take drugs and do alcohol, they sort of like dim a little bit and you don't really receive that energy and vibe too tough. So being so somewhat sober in that regard definitely helps. But I'm just not too sure if, if, if it's a good long term strategy to do, you know, especially for your ear health, all that sort of stuff just completely sober just going raving and, just, and also just for like a waste of time it really does and you end up getting agitated end up hating humans or you end up like me like you know looking at people and taking a piss out of them in your head like all those things can happen as well and then of course but the one good thing about it when you are sober is that you notice things so i was standing you know in flipping print works just listening to the music and kind of zoning out and staring into the abyss and i noticed one guy had climbed up on one of the speakers i think if you're familiar with pretty much you would know there's a stack of speakers they have on each side of the little you know gangway where the main print works is and they're sort of like a stack of speakers but they're sort of encased in this cage i guess to keep them safe they don't topple over but it's a cool little design as well and this guy i guess climbed up that entire thing got up to the top of the speakers and started doing handstands like handstand push-ups handstand and then cycling his wheel his feet around and at first we all thought it was a performer because i think during the during one bit of Dixon's performance, he had like a um I guess you would call him burlesque or like a striptease kind of dancer on the pole doing crazy moves on the pole and stuff. Right, it was really cool because it kind of matched the vibe of music, blah 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 blah. So we thought that guy was part of it, but obviously when I clearly looked closer, he wasn't because he just you know some dudes in some tracksuits and trainers and his boxers out. So he clearly wasn't. And then by the time he got up to the top and the security got a hold of him, you know. It, it, I, thought, I thought it might turn into a flipping um, George Floyd situation, mate, because they were putting all kinds of arms, knees, and elbows on him. So that was a bit sad to see. But, you know, again, when you're sober, you see those kind of things. I guess when you're drunk, you're just such in your own vibe, such in your own world. You don't notice any of those sort of type of things. The only thing you notice is how, how long you haven't been to the toilet or something. You know what I mean? So that's a big one. So big up. All of those included, big up all of those people included. I happened to bump into because I had an absolute blast. I had an absolute blast.